Hi, everybody. Welcome to our headset webinar today. Today, we are going to talk about the cannabis consumer. Uh, and before we get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit about headset as well as the speakers that we have here today. Headset is a cannabis data intelligence company. We offer cannabis data intelligence products to give you insights into consumer trends to drive your strategy. Whether you're using our tools on your own data or using the data we create, logging into the Headset platform will help you answer critical questions about cannabis sales in real time. As retailers, producers, distributors, investor, or investors, uh, you need to understand your consumer and their purchasing behaviors to gain an edge in this rapidly changing market. Our tools were created to give you the data you need when you need it. We have three main product offerings. The first one is called Insights, and this is a market intelligence product. In Insights, we provide daily product level information on sales to help producers, manufacturers, and retailers understand the adult use cannabis market space. In Insights, you can find information on sales, brand rankings, pricing trends, and even analyze market events like 420. Insights goes beyond the what uh, is purchase and dives into when with our demand planning tool. In demand planning, you'll be able to understand seasonal trends, holiday demand, and we even have dashboards to highlight the rapidly changing market that is occurring uh, because of COVID-19. In addition, in Insights, you can now answer who is buying. Uh, this is with our new demographic trends dashboards. This is all based on transactional data from over 3 million distinct shoppers across the United States. Finally, using insights, you can answer the what else and examine things like shopper wallets and attachment rates in our new market basket analysis. Today, we'll be using the data mostly from our demographics and market basket analysis to drive the presentation. Using all this data together, we can move beyond the what of data and answer, so what do I do next? Our second product is Retailer. Retailer is a business intelligence tool for cannabis retailers to assist them with tracking their own sales, optimizing their inventory, and streamlining their operations. This tool is meant to help retailers gain a better understanding of their business and use their own data to make data-driven decisions. In addition, we offer Retailer Premium, a product which gives cannabis retailers the ability to dig into their data and do more sophisticated analysis like understand their customer, measure the success of their marketing campaigns, better prepare for future demand, and do market basket analysis. This brand new tool can help you increase your average ticket, maximize your referral campaigns, or optimize your discounting. Finally, Bridge is our last product. This is our vendor managed inventory tool. Bridge allows retailers to directly share sales and inventory data with vendors to facilitate a more collaborative relationship. Visualize sales across accounts, eliminate stockouts, and protect against excess inventory. Bridge gives you an unprecedented view of your customer's health to ensure success. Now that you know a little bit about Headset, let me tell you who I have here today uh, to do this webinar along with me. I'm Liz Connors. I'm the Director of Analytics here at Headset. I also brought with me three other members of the analytics team who will each present a portion of today's webinar. This is our first big team webinar and I'm really excited to have some of my coworkers helping me present today. That said, as we embark on this new format, uh, we're all working from home. <laughs> so if the slide handoffs aren't perfect or you hear a dog bark in the background, my sincere apologies. If you find yourself with questions, please feel free to put them in the chat section. We will do our best to answer them at the end. We will also provide a written responses to the questions uh, if we didn't get to them. Or you can always reach out to Headset uh, by going to our website, headset.io, and submitting any questions there. A link to the answers uh, to those questions, as well as this slide deck, will be available later in the week. And with that out of the way, I think we should get started. Today, I'm going to start our webinar by looking at the average cannabis consumer and then hand it off to my teammates to dig into the consumer trends of pre-rolls and tinctures. Cooper Ashley will tell you about demographic trends in those two growing categories. Cooper's been with Headset for three years and writes most of our industry reports and blog posts. His most recent industry report on basket penetration, as well as many others, can be found at headset.io slash industry dash reports. If that URL is too long, just go to headset.io and you'll be able to find him there. Up next, we have Blake Ferry. Blake will provide additional insight into consumer behaviors by looking into segment and package size trends. Blake joined Headset earlier this year after leaving Amazon. Blake works as in, on our analysts' service consulting team and does analytics to help launch insights in new markets, as well as dive deeper into retailer trends. Finally, Cassie Thielen will finish up. Cassie is going to introduce us to share of wallet analysis. 
We all know customers purchase more than one item, but understanding how their wallet is split among different categories will help you understand where your customers are spending their dollars. Cassie joined our team about six months ago after working as an analyst at Haynes Brand. All right, so before we get started, I wanna talk about the data we're using today. Today we'll be using Headsets Insights data. This data represents adult use sales trends uh, and everything you'll see today is gonna to be for the state of California. We do offer insights in many other states, but today we're gonna to focus on the California market. Unless otherwise noted, we are looking at data for the month of May uh, of this year which if you're listening to this recorded is the year 2020, in case you're way in the future. The data you see today are all forecasted based on data from our aggregated cleanse and anonymized uh, connected retailer partners. In California, we're connected to nearly 100 retailers across the state. Me and my teammates take this data and run it through rigorous statistical procedures, as well as normalize the product data to create our real-time insights forecasts. Today, we'll be looking at our new demographic data, this is derived in real time from our point of sale connections. Using this data, we can track anonymous customers through time to understand their purchase behaviors. To anonymize the data uh, we are given, uh, we give random numbers or random hashes to each customer, and then we can follow these customers through time and understand things like repeat purchase rates and cross category purchases. We also receive a generation and a gender for each customer. This allows us to find insights like female millennials spend a larger portion of their cannabis wallet on edibles than their male counterparts, and that while edibles are only about 12% of the total market, over a six-month period, about a third of shoppers will buy at least one edible. Today, we'll start by digging into the cannabis consumer as a whole. We will dive into consumers of pre-rolls and tinctures and compare these to consumers uh, to the average consumer. Um, and then we'll look within the pre-roll category to see trends at the segment level. And finally, dig into the wallet share of pre-rolls and see what else those customers are buying. In May, in adult use cannabis sales in California, we see that about a third of the cannabis spending is done by women. This trend has been relatively steady over the years, with females slightly increasing their wallet share over time. When we think about the percent of shoppers, we also see that about a third of cannabis shoppers are women. So women make up about a third of the sales. They also make up about a third of the people. Uh, coming into these dispensaries. When we learn that market share of sales and market share of customers is similar, this tells us that each group is spending a similar amount in total. Thus, while women are a smaller portion of the overall consumers, each female customer represents a similar potential revenue amount as a male customer. Brands or retailers looking to expand their revenues really only have two options. You can either go out and attract new customers, get new customers in the door and have incremental shoppers, or we can get our current customers to spend more money. So we could increase their total wallet. Here I would say attempting to attract female customers could be a great way to get more incremental shoppers. Let's continue to dive into this trend. Next, we're gonna look at generations. Before I get started too much, I wanna define the generations. At Headset, we use the generational definitions maintained by the Pew Research Center. Uh, and we've split cannabis customers into their generations based on their birth years. Going from oldest to youngest, we will start with the silent generation. These individuals were born during the Great Depression uh, up until about the start of World War II. Individuals in this generation are aged 75 to 92. That is a year older than what's shown on the viz. I just had already had a snap from uh, their ages in 2019. Uh, this demographic group is marked by their childhood taking place during the Great Depression, which left them more frugal than other groups. This generation is shrinking in size as the median life expectancy in the US, in the US is 78 years. Uh, and this group is aged 75 to 92. The next generation is baby boomers. This generation was so named because they were born during the baby boom that followed the end of World War II. Individuals in this generation are 56 to 74 years old. This generation is known for the uh, increasing prosperity um, of which they grew up in, as well as coming of age during the counterculture of the 1960s and 70s, which birthed the nickname flower power or flower children for this generation. This group of individuals is nearing or already in retirement. Next, we'll move to Gen X. Individuals in this generation were born between 1965 and 1980 and were often deemed latchkey kids. Gen Xers are considered the first daycare generation because many were raised by two parents who worked or a single divorced parent. This generation delayed marriage and childbearing to focus on developing themselves first. They are the first generation to heavily value work-life balance. Now the generation everyone loves to talk about, millennials. Born between 1981 and 1996, this generation is one of the most studied generations of all time. This generation came of age during the new millennium. 
and most in it do not remember a time before computers were a common home staple. This generation was raised by less authoritative parents and had access to the internet for most of their lives. This group is known for their tech-savvy li tech lifestyles and delayed entry into traditional adult milestones like getting married, buying a house, or starting a family. As of 2019, millennials overtook baby boomers as the largest generational group in the United States, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, the Bureau reported that around 73 million millennials uh, are alive today in America, compared to 72 million baby boomers. In addition, projections show that Generation Z will be larger than baby boomers in less than 10 years, with 2028 being the inflection point. So I think a lot of people think about baby boomers as this uh, very large generation, but it actually turns out today, as it stands, there are more millennials. Um, knowing all of this, this leads us into our last generation, or Gen Z. This generation was born between 1997 and 2012. The oldest in this generation is only 23 years old. This generation was born during a time when most households had broadband internet access, and they likely do not remember a time before smartphones. Generation Z is known for their independence and concerns about the environment. This generation represents the biggest source of growth for cannabis as they age into the marketplace. In the state of California, even the oldest individuals in Generation Z were born before the legalization, or were born after, I'm sorry, after the legalization of medical cannabis in California in 1996. As this generation ages into the cannabis market space, brands need to consider its unique characteristics. Let's talk about some of the things that define the consumption within each group of generations. I'm not going to read this whole slide to you. Rather, I want to discuss some of the findings on Generation Z. Uh, the most impactful, I think, for us today is the way that Generation Z uh, chooses which products to consume. The core of Gen Z, uh, the core of Gen Z is the idea of manifesting individual identity. Consumption, therefore, becomes a means of self-expression as opposed to, for example, buying or wearing brands to fit in with the norms of a group. Led by Gen Z and millennials, consumers across generations are not only eager for more personalized products, but also willing to pay a premium for products that highlight their individuality. This means these consumers think about the things they buy as expressions of themselves. Brands looking to over-index to these consumers need to have clear messages on their positioning, which would be very important as we just uh, discussed how these two consumer groups are growing. Let's take a look at how large each consumer group is today. Here we see that millennials make up a full 50% of the marketplace. Millennials have held steady in their market share, though this is slowly beginning to wane as Generation Z ages into the market. Today in California, Generation Z is 9% of the market and growing rapidly every day. Recall the prior slide, Gen Z only has two and a half years of of age consumers, with the oldest in this generation turning 23 this year. Being that Generation Z is a smaller generation than millennials, and that millennials are all of age and encompass 15 years um, of life, we are comfortable saying that Generation Z is already over-indexing in both customer penetration, or the percent of consumers that make a purchase, as well as having the larger wallets, in, uh, larger wallets than the generations before them. But let's put a little bit of data to these growth trends. Bubble charts are difficult to read, so let me give you an explanation of how to interpret this graph. Firstly, on the y-axis, or the vertical axis, we see the generations. The colors of the dot designate the gender. The x-axis, or the horizontal axis, displays the year-over-year -year growth, and the size of the dot is the total sales volume from that particular group. Using this graph, we can see first that millennial males are the largest source of revenue today. This group makes up a third of cannabis sales in California. The next thing I want to point out is the presence of the purple dots, which represent females. In all generational groups except the silent generation, sales to females are growing faster than those to males. We can see this because the purple dot is further to the right on the graph for most of those generations. Finally, let's look at those dots all the way on the bottom right. That's Generation Z. While they are only 9% of the market today, we can see that this group grew over 150% over last year as new consumers aged into the marketplace. This growth has been even larger in the last few months as COVID-19 has changed our habits. We fully expect this growth to continue uh, over the years, with Generation Z becoming the largest source of cannabis revenue likely by 2026, if growth trends continue. This has been a look at the cannabis consumer in general. However, there are many different products and many different brands. So what I want to do now is hand off to Cooper, who will dig into some of the category trends. 
It heads that we classify cannabis products into nine distinct categories. And today Cooper is gonna talk through the trends in pre-rolls and tinctures and sublinguals, which make up around 15% and 2% of the adult use cannabis market respectively. So this does vary over time and by season. So Cooper, please take it away. Thanks Liz. Uh, as you mentioned, we're going to take a look at the customer demographics of the pre-roll and tincture categories. But before we do, I'd like everyone uh, listening today to just take a moment to imagine the average pre-roll customer and the average tincture customer. Who do you think they are? How do you think they're the same? How do you think they're different? Whenever I do this type of exercise, I try to keep in mind the most common use cases for those product formats. Pre-rolls, for example, are low cost and convenient in that they are ready to be smoked as soon as you leave the shop, as long as you have a lighter, which shops usually sell. Uh, they're also super portable and easy to bring to group gatherings. This kind of makes me think of younger customers more than older customers, makes me think of outdoor in, you know, group activities, that sort of thing. Tinctures, on the other hand, uh, have a much stronger association with medical cannabis usage. First off, they're almost always packaged in a glass dropper bottle, like you see on the screen, which have a real apothecary or medical type aesthetic. And then with that dropper bottle, tinctures allow consumers to really control their dosage for predictable, repeatable experiences. And tinctures don't require smoking, smoking or vaping, which can be, um, that can be a draw to health con conscious customers or customers who are generally more intimidated or apprehensive about consuming cannabis. That definitely makes me think of older customers and perhaps more likely female due to the association with health and wellness. Okay, so now we've got some assumptions. Let's check them by diving into the data. We'll start by looking at share of sales by gender within each category. And remember for all of these slides, we're looking at California adult use sales data from May of this year. So as Liz showed us, overall men contribute about two thirds of sales and women contribute the other third. We can see that on that top bar for pre-rolls that the, their sales align pretty closely with that same ratio. Tinctures, on the other hand, have a much higher relative proportion of sales to females, even though they still contribute less than half the total sales within the category. This means that females over-index and males under-index in the tincture category, and we'll talk more about indexes in a bit. So already by looking at one metric, just, just gender sales, we're seeing how different these two categories are, and let's compare each groups next. Slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so this chart, chart shows the proportion of sales within the pre-roll and tincture categories to each of our established age groups. And from an initial glance, we can already see that there's some pretty big differences in who is more likely to buy these products. Let's look at each age group from the youngest to oldest, and that's moving from the bottom to the top of each bar. Generation Z is our youngest tracked age group. And as Liz mentioned earlier, they will continue to age into the market by turning 21 over the coming years. At 10%, their share of pre-roll sales is more than three times their share of tincture sales. So we can see a clear preference for pre-rolls over tinctures there. Millennials, the next youngest and the biggest generation by total sales volume, show a single, uh, similar trend between the two categories with a strong preference to pre-rolls but with a less extreme tendency than Gen, Gen Z. In fact, in combination, millennials and Gen Z drive almost two thirds of all sales to pre-rolls, but only 40% of all tincture sales. This sends a clear message that a classic joint really resonates with the youngest customers in the marketplace. When we move up to the next oldest age group, Generation X, the trend suddenly switches directions. Gen X have 31% share of your sales, but only 24% in pre-rolls. So we've seen that that overall trend switch directions. That trend continues with baby boomers who have a two to one ratio of tincture market share to pre-roll share. And finally, the silent generation, while their total sales are small, they contribute three times as much market share to the tincture category over pre-rolls. Um, so that perfectly mirrors the, the ratio we saw in Gen Z just in the opposite direction. Now, if you're kind of squinting at this graph to see some of the differences, I don't blame you, especially that those lines up at the top for the silent gen are really small. Um, next, we'll look at a sales index table that'll help us better understand the differences between these generations. Okay, so here we are looking at the sales indexes of each group within the two categories. Indexes make it much easier to understand the relative difference in spending between groups within a category. An index value of less than 100 means that the group is spending less of their wallet on that category than average. 
And conversely, an index value of more than 100 means the opposite, that the age group is spending relatively more than average on that category. This makes it much simpler to get a quick gauge on the differences between groups. For example, in that last slide, we notice how the silent generation and Gen Z have preferences for the two categories in similar ratios, about three to one, but opposite directions. This index table shows us a lot more detail about that relationship. For example, over on the right-hand side, we can see that for the silent generation, that ratio is driven by a super strong over-index in tinctures, that 255 number in the green, and a moderately strong under-index in pre-rolls, that 57 number. But for Gen Z on the left, it is caused by a really, really strong under-index in tinctures, that 35. It's actually the lowest index on the, on the whole graph, and only a slight over-index in pre-rolls. So now we can conclude that silent the, the silent generation's preference for tinctures is relatively more abnormal than Gen Z's preference for pre-roll. And a Gen Z customer is more unlikely to purchase a tincture than any other age group category combination on the, the table we're showing here. So that just goes to show how, how you can get a lot more uh, information from an index table uh, versus plain old wallet share. Okay, and now whenever you analyze sales data, it's important to think about trends over time. So we're gonna look at some year-over-year -year growth next. Uh, and again, this is a bubble chart like Liz showed you earlier. Um, and it's got a lot, of go lot going on, so I'll just break it down quickly here. Um, there's a horizontal row of data points for both the pre-roll and tincture categories with a dot placed along the X or horizontal axis to indicate the year-over-year -year sales growth from May 2019 to May of this year for the corresponding age group. The size of each dot shows the total sales to that category from the corresponding age group in May of this year. So you can see that the largest dot is uh, pre-roll millennial, uh, millennials sales to pre-rolls. Um, so one of the first things that stands out to me, again, is Generation Z's extremely high year-over-year -year growth in both categories. Uh, Liz touched on this earlier, but it's worth reiterating. With more and more customers aging into the market every day, Gen Z is on track to become the most important customer set in cannabis over the coming years, so we should be paying attention to them. We can see here that their sales growth in tinctures is higher than in pre-rolls, even though the actual sales are much lower in tinctures. In contrast, the silent generation has negative sales growth in both categories for a similar reason. There are fewer total customers in this group over time. And then except for the silent generation, all age groups have positive year over year growth in pre-roll sales, but only millennial and Gen Z, uh, millennials and Gen Z have positive growth in tincture sales. This means that older customers maybe were more likely to enter the market a year ago by trying more approachable product formats such as, such as tinctures, but have since maybe expanded their shopping into other categories like pre-rolls. And before I wrap up, let's look at sales growth between genders in these categories. Oh, so here we're looking at the year-over-year -year sales growth for male and female customers in tinctures and pre-rolls. On the first slide, we saw that females over-index in tinctures, but perhaps less so than in the past. At the top of the chart, we can see that female tincture sales growth is negative 11% from last year, whereas sales to males customers have more or less held steady at 0.6% growth. Both genders had strong year-over-year -year sales growth in the pre-roll category, but if I were starting a new pre-roll brand right now, I would focus my launch strategy on female customers since they had double the growth rate over men last year. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Blake for some more in-depth category analysis. Uh, thanks, Cooper. So in the next set of slides, we'll be diving deeper into the pre-roll category in California and exploring the intricacies of the category, but on the segment level. Uh, so we'll first start with some top line numbers. So this graph is the most recent complete month, which is May 2020, of California pre-roll sales data compared to the same month in the prior two years. So the first thing you'll notice is the sales totals variances between genders. As Cooper mentioned, males in California account for approximately two-thirds of sales, so it's no surprise here to see that the gender split within the pre-roll category aligns with that. Uh, in terms of year-over-year -year growth, pre-roll sales to female customers has been growing at a faster pace than sales to male customers. The growth rate of pre-roll sales to female customers has caused the share of total pre-roll sales to go from 32% in 2019 to 36% in 2020, indicating an increased affinity for the pre-roll category among female customers. Uh, next slide, please. So 
here we're going to drill down one layer further into month over month sales growth over the trailing 12 months. We see that in the first half of the trailing 12 months, both genders see similar growth patterns in pre-roll sales. Uh, but as we move across the X axis, we see the two demographics diverge. Uh, so COVID became a major, major public health issue in the US in the February, March timeframe, which is where we see a general decrease in pre-roll sales. Uh, this decrease is attributed to the fact that since COVID is a respiratory virus and highly contagious, consumers moved away from purchasing inhalable and combustible products that are commonly shared with other people and in social situations. So interestingly enough though, male and female pre-roll consumers reacted very differently to COVID. In the initial phases of the COVID outbreak between February and March, female pre-roll sales grew 3.1% month over month, whereas male sales were flat. And as the outbreak progressed, we see that male pre-roll sales took a sharp dive down to negative 14% growth between March and April, but female consumers only saw a negative 4% decrease month over month. Uh, so let's dig one layer further into that large drop in April. Uh, you can go back one step, there we go. Um, uh, if we overlay age groups on the gender data above, we find that the female group's shallow decline was held up by its youngest age group, Gen Z, which only saw a month over month decline of 1.3%. Conversely, the large 14% decline among male customers was primarily driven by Gen Z. And of course, the growth between April and May was driven by the Gen Z age group growing 19% in the male group and by 11% in the female group. Now that we have an understanding of the broader sales trends within pre-rolls in California, we'll now dig into the category penetration within different sets of customer demographics. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the line graph above shows the percentage of customers in each age group that purchased a pre-roll item over the trailing 12 months. So we're defining this customer penetration here as the percentage of cannabis consumers in a given month that purchased an item in the selected category, which in this case is pre-rolls. So the graph above shows us the baby boomers in the silent generation have the two lowest penetration percentages, which is approximately 20% and 18% over the last year, and have really remained really steady over time. And conversely, the three youngest generations have the highest penetration and have been building momentum over the past six months. So during the period of May 2019 to October 2019, we see that Gen X has the highest customer penetration, followed by Millennials and Gen Z. But starting in November 2019, we see an inflection point where these, where these three groups begin to change trajectory. And by April 2020, we see that customer penetration by age group is ranked perfectly in order from youngest, being Gen Z, to oldest, which is the silent generation. So one plausible explanation for the growing penetration in recent months among young age groups is fear, or in this case, lack thereof, of COVID in different age groups. So younger generations are the least likely to suffer severe complications from a respiratory disease like COVID, and are therefore less likely to deviate from an inhalable category like pre-rolls, which would explain the continued growth and customer penetration shown above. So now that we have an understanding of general pre-roll sales trends over time, both in terms of sales and customer demographics, let's dig into the segments within the pre-rolls that customers are purchasing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this index chart above, similar to what you saw with Cooper, uh, compares how different age groups spend their money within the pre-roll category. So over 100 would mean the group spends comparatively more on the segment, less than 100 means they spend comparatively less on the segment. And younger age groups, which include Gen Z, Millennials, and Gen X, are fairly similar in how they spend the, in the pre-roll category, with one outlier. Gen Z greatly over-indexes in the sales of Canagars and Blunts, Products within this segment tend to be larger than your typical pre-roll, making this an ideal purchase for younger customers looking to use in a social situation. And on the other hand, older age groups, which includes baby boomers in the silent generation, tend to greatly under-index in the Canon Car Unborn segment, likely for the same reasons that the younger generations over-index in the segment. Another interesting insight from this visualization is that there's an increasing index score in the Indica single strain segment, moving from youngest on the left to the oldest age groups on the right. This is likely due to the fact that the Indica strain products are typically associated with pain management, sleep aid, and other medicinal applications, which are the primary reasons older consumers purchase cannabis. Now that we know about segments of certain age, know what segments certain age groups prefer, we'll div, dig into the price points within segments broken out by age group. Uh, next slide, please. So the visualization above shows the average item price by segment within each age group. 
So the x-axis shows age groups from oldest to youngest, from left to right. Uh, the first thing that jumps out here is the Canagars and Blunt segment. There's a clear average item price trend as you move from the older age groups to the younger ones, indicating that within the segment, older age groups, presumably with more discretionary spend, are willing to pay a higher price point. So although this trend is clear in the Canagars and Blunt segment, it doesn't hold up when you apply it across the less novel segments. So think of things like hybrid, sativa, indica, mixed strain pre-rolls. So looking at these four segments across age groups, we see that the range of average item prices is much smaller than the Canagar Blunt segment. So where you saw a $9 range, you now see a $4 range in the uh, four kind of standard pre-roll strains, which suggests that there's more competition and price parity in these four main pre-roll segments. Okay, so now that we've covered the specific nuances of customers purchasing products in the pre-roll category, we'll move into the next examining cross-category purchasing behaviors by customer group. And with that, I will hand it over to my friend, Cassie. Thanks, Blake. I hope you all are all ready to keep your analyst hats on with me as we push through this last section. Before we dive into the numbers of what we are seeing in California with the pre-roll and tincture purchaser, we need to define one thing wallet share. As consumers, we purchase many different items over time as we shop. With our wallet share analysis, we will dig into the purchase patterns of the individual consumers to see what consumers purchase over time. For example, perhaps this week a consumer goes into a retailer and purchases two pre-rolls and an eighth of flour. Two weeks later, the customer returns and purchases another two pre-rolls and an edible. This customer has split their cannabis wallet across three different categories. We call this wallet share because we examine the total sales or wallet of the consumer over time. With this analysis, we can learn not just what products consumers buy, but what else they are buying. This analysis is important for brands and retailers that are looking to understand their consumers' purchases. Now that we are aligned with that, with the definition of wallet share, let's put this term to use. Next slide, please. Cooper and Blake did an outstanding job diving into the gender and age differences within that pre-roll customer. And as Blake mentioned, there's just one missing link. How is that customer spending their money on other categories? In addition to the pre-roll customer data on the left, I'm going to bring back our fun and outlier Tinkature customer on the right to compare how the two are spending their wallet shares differently. What we are looking at here are those two customers, the pre-roll purchaser and the Tinkature purchaser and their overall wallet share across all categories. I don't know about you, but the first insight that is screaming out to me is that large amount of wallet share that tinkatures have with the tinkature customer compared to the itty bitty amount the pre-roll customer has spent on tinkatures. This tells us that some of purchasing tinkatures aren't just purchasing them randomly at the register. They spend over a quarter of their wallet share on them. Another insight you can see is the difference in inhalables. The categories that are included in inhalables are vapor pens, flowers, and concentrates. 67% of pre-roll customers' wallet share is used for inhalables, when it, when it only attributes to 48% of tincture customers' wallet share. This supports Cooper's view of the tincture being more health conscious and not wanting to smoke, but consume cannabis and more healthy alternatives. My final insight for this graph also supports Cooper's view of the tincture consumer. Tincture's consumer's wallet share on edibles has six percentage points higher compared to that of the pre-roll customer. This supports again that they are looking for other and healthier ways to consume cannabis. I like data with action behind it, so let's chat about what action can be taken with this powerful data. Marketing or discounting ideas can easily come from this sort of data. One idea that comes to mind after analyzing this top level data is to promote edibles with the purchase of a tincture since there is more of a likelihood that they will, be, they will be purchasing an edible with their wallet share more than a pre-roll purchaser would. I'm sure you've been missing the demographics data, and so have I. Next up on our journey is to review some gender data. Next slide, please. Following Blake's path, I'll be diving further into the pre-roll customer. What you're seeing here is the wallet share of the pre-roll purchaser broken out further by females versus males. 
first thing I noticed, there isn't a lot of difference. Both genders have close to the same amount of category share. Now, after looking at this more than 10 seconds and reviewing the numbers, I start to see something different happening within flower. The share of flower for males who purchase pre-rolls is 41%, while for females who purchase pre-rolls, it's 36%. Where did that five percentage points go? It seems that the share of flower for women is being eaten up by edibles and pre-rolls. With this insight, you could make an assumption that females who are purchasing pre-rolls are also looking for easy and convenient ways to consume their cannabis. Since gender didn't really show a lot of differences, it's on to our next stop, generation. Next slide, please. What you are seeing here is the same as the previous slide, but instead of dividing up the customers by gender, we are now dividing them into generations. There's a lot going on with these pie charts, but if we step back, we can easily see Step back, we can easily see that flower is still the majority of the wallet share across all generations. I also see that vapor pens and concentrates are shrinking as we move towards older generations. For us to really dive further into this data, I think we need to make them a bit more simplified. Next slide will be more digestible graphs to dive further into fun insights. Next slide, please. On this, oh, this is much easier to see. We have flour, pre-roll, we combine vapor pens and concentrates. Then all the other non inhibitable products are lumped together. Even though this data is for pre-roll customers, the wallet share of both vapor pens and concentrates gets smaller and smaller as we move to older generations. Seems like a lot of older generations are still hesitant to, to dip their toe in the vaping and dabbing world, and the younger generations sure do love those vapor pens. Another insight that shouldn't surprise us that much is that the silent generation pre-roll customer is spending the most on non-inhalable products out of the other four generations. But they're spending, spending the most on pre-rolls than all the other generations. This might be due to them not being able to roll their own joints anymore, but I like to think that grandma and grandpa are chilling with their friends and smoking and joint with one another at their retirement homes. These are, some, these are some cool facts, but let's again put them into action. If you're launching a pre-roll product, you might be surprised at how well it could do near a retirement community, considering the older generation who is purchasing pre-rolls is spending the most of their wallet on it. Another marketing idea, because they are fun to think about, is if you are marketing to an area that has a higher population of Gen Z, possibly promoting a vapor pen rather than a flower discount with a pre-roll purchase would be the craziest idea since their vapor pen and concentrate wallet share exceeds flower by 9%. I could easily go on and on about what action can be taken with this powerful data, but we have a webinar to wrap up, so I'll pass the mic back over to Liz to tie a nice bow around this presentation. Take it away, Liz. Thanks, Cassie. All right. Well, um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of what we went through. So today, what we looked at, we learned that 33% of cannabis sales are from women and that women are growing faster than men in nearly every generational group. Uh, we learned that pre-rolls over-index to younger generations, while tinctures are the opposite. Uh, we learned that pre-rolls are growing fastest for, youngest generation, for the youngest generations, and older generations tend to over-index in things like CBD strains um, and maybe even indicas. Finally, we found that consumers that buy pre-rolls spend about 25% of their cannabis wallet on pre-rolls, and that was a bit larger for women. Uh, so with that, I think this is uh, coming to the end. So I just put up this slide to remind you about the three products we have. You can learn more about them at headset.io. Um, and I believe we have time for a couple of questions. I got a few in the chat box while uh, everybody was talking. So I'm going to read them out here. Uh, the first one I think is for you, Blake. Um, and the question is, uh, have basket size changed during COVID? So as we think about the transactions uh, people are, are making as a result of COVID, is there anything notably different? Uh, yeah, thanks, Liz. So basket sizes are generally increasing during COVID. Um, one of the reasons is the difference between in-store shopping and delivery. So basket sizes are generally larger through delivery mediums because there's usually a delivery fee associated with each order. So people want to maximize the cost effectiveness of paying that fee. 
mean they want to get as much bang for their bucks as possible by making a larger order. Uh, and conversely, when we look at store shopping, typically consumers are stocking up because they don't want the exposure and contact of making multiple shopping trips or frequent shopping trips. So when they are in stores, they tend to buy more. Great. Thanks, Blake. And that actually uh, triggered a follow-up question kind of straight away. Um, and I think, Cassie, I'm going to ask you to answer this one. How prevalent is delivery right now? Do you have any information that can kind of uh, give a little bit of light to people listening? Yeah, this is great timing because I think I just did an analysis on this actually. So we uh, looked at delivery um, within Canada stores um, that are offering them. And we compared uh, this, like the basket size of those delivery baskets um, in January and February compared to April. And it is crazy the difference in sizes and also how many people are purchasing through delivery now. So in April, it was 3.2% uh, were delivery baskets. Um, and they had like an average basket size of like 87 compared to like January and February. There were only like 2.2% of sales. Um, and it was 1.6% of the baskets. So a huge increase, of course, to baskets of like 3.2% compared to 1.6%. So big increase there. And then also basket size, like Blake was talking about, basket size in January and February were only $84 when, um, like I said, April was $87. So definitely delivery is becoming more and more important to people, especially during COVID. Great, thanks, Cassie. Um, for the next one, I'm going to have Cooper answer this one. The question is, uh, you talked a lot in the presentation about tinctures. Um, are the trends that you're seeing here true of all medical type products? Um, do you have any information maybe on other, other types of medical products? Sure. Um, so we do. I mean, all of our data is, well, just remind our viewers, is for adult use sales only. But I definitely, in kind of anecdotally, think of tinctures, maybe capsules topicals as sort of more uh, medically focused or, or more closely aligned with wellness usage in general. Um, so I, I did, I saw this question come through and I pulled up our new demographics dashboard, which, which helps answer these kind of questions. Um, so I am seeing that capsules have a really, really similar trend to tinctures with uh, basically the, the wallet share increasing through the age groups with Gen Z being the lowest and silent generation being uh, having a really strong over index. It seems like it's not quite as strong of an over index as tinctures, um, but, but it's definitely strong. And then topicals is the, is the exact same um, really strong over index with our oldest customers, really strong under index with our youngest customers. But I will say that you know all of those categories, even if Gen Z is um, the smallest, has the smallest wallet share right now, they have the highest growth in every single category. Um, so even even if their wallet share is small, it's still worth paying attention on how to recruit those customers into the category because they are turning to it more than they did last year. Great, thanks, Cooper. Um, there are just two more questions and I'm actually gonna take the last two. Uh, one of them I just happened to have an appendix slide for, so that is a bit serendipitous. Um, but the question was, we talked a lot about uh, genders and we talked a lot about generations. We didn't really interlay them together. So are there any within uh, generation differences across gender? Uh, so the slide I've put up here looks at the percent of total sales um, within each generational group by the gender. Uh, and so what you can see is there definitely are some trends for sure. Um, not anything truly, truly earth shattering, though I do want to point out um, in the baby boomers and the silent generation segment, actually even in Gen, Gen X, we do see a bit more um, sales to females there uh, than we do in some of the other generations. Millennials, uh, female millennials have always been slightly lower um, in their penetration compared to uh, other, other age groups. Um, I have heard this, uh, or I have seen this start to wane with Generation Z. In Generation Z, we do see a bit more female participation than we do in, in millennials. This is pretty true across most markets here. You're just looking at California. Um, but I think something to think about. Another thing I want to point out as we talk about uh, uh, gender splits um, is the idea of the final consumer versus the purchaser. So 
uh, just because 30% of sales are going to females, it doesn't mean that females consume 30% of cannabis. Uh, a, a, another good way to think about this is um, not 100% of sales to tampons are to women, right? Um, so most women have had a male counterpart in their life, a male partner that has purchased a feminine hygiene product for them for their use. So um, the way we should think about this, though, is ultimately the person that's making the purchase usually has the decision power, the register. Um, so thinking about the person making the purchase uh, can be pretty, pretty compelling there. And then the very last question uh, that I want to address is what can I do as a brand to better perform now with COVID being a part of daily life? Um, I think that's a great question because that's kind of one of the reasons that we did this presentation. We have a webinar on just general COVID trends as well that you could watch if you're more interested in general trends. Um, but the reason that we decided to do this demographics webinar now and ultimately launch our demographics data is because I think historically in this marketplace, the bud tender or the salesperson has had a lot of influence over purchases. We did some research at Headset and found that the bud tender um, is predictive of what will be in the basket aside from the consumer preference. However, uh, as, as both Blake and Cassie kind of talked about, we are seeing more people either uh, purchase online for delivery or click to collect. So they go online, they make their purchases, and then they just sort of walk into the store and, and take the bag of products away without ever interacting with the bud tender. And this is rapidly becoming more common, especially during COVID. And I'm not sure that this uh, trend will go away, even if social distancing does. I think a lot of research right now is saying that consumers that are shifting sales online will probably stay there. Um, and so what that means is as a brand where perhaps your marketing strategy before was to win over the bud tender and hope that the bud tender becomes an advocate for your products. Um, I think that you might need to be shifting out of that almost more B2B mind frame and move into B2C marketing. This is where you should be thinking about your customer. You should have good branding. You should have a concise brand message, a brand story. Um, and in order to do that, first thing you need to know before you can do B2C marketing is who the heck is C? Um, so who is my consumer? So we built these, uh, all of this data so that you can understand first the general cannabis consumer, then dive into the types of products. We even offer some custom studies on brands. So you could come in and, and understand how does um, uh, this brand, how does brand A in the mint segment compare to maybe brand B, or even how do high-end chocolate consumers compare to say um, bargain basement gummy consumers. And so, uh, I think that that's one of the biggest things that brands are really going to have to start doing soon is understanding their customer and tailoring that message um, and going after customer groups that are growing. We talked a lot about how Gen Z is, is growing really fast. If you're looking uh, to build a product now, you're looking to make new products and gain incremental customers, Gen Z could be a good way to do that. Um, so I think with that, uh, this probably concludes our webinar. If you have any other questions, you can always um, reach out to us. You can go to headset.io and we have a little chat bot you can chat with, um, or you can just email me. Uh, my email is liz at headset.io. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, I hope to see you on one of our webinars in the future. Thanks for coming, guys.